SH Figuarts Dragon Ball Z third form freezer was released on September 25th as a premium Bandai web exclusive and retails for 8,000 yen or 85 US dollars. Third form freezer also gets the Tamashi same time worldwide shipping treatment. So if you pre-ordered through premium Bandai US, he should be with you very soon, if not already. So go check your mailboxes like right now, then come back, I'll wait. So if you guys watch my review on Second Form Freezer, you'll know that this guy right here is my all-time favorite version. And finally having him in the SH Figuarts line was definitely one of the highlights of this incredible year of releases. In saying that, Third Form Freezer was probably the one that piqued my interest the most. Why? Well, Second Form Freezer, I could tell just by the promotional photos and Tamashi's track record with the success of First Form Freezer and Cooler, that second form freezer was going to be an instant hit. But the unique design and proportions of third form gave me doubt as to how well Tamashi would actually balance all that top heavy weight with these tiny in comparison legs. Tamashi haven't always made the best choice when it comes to top heavy characters. Sure, they do their best, giving us sturdier neck joints with Super Saiyan 3 Goku or thinning out the hair with Raditz. But then we get figures like Chase, which is still a great figure, but all that hair over time has made the neck joint loose and unfortunately can't hold itself up without the aid of some blue tack on the back or having Chase do the smooth criminal. Yes, second form Freezer's noggin is huge, especially when you compare it to the body, which looks a little small in comparison, and that's not a complaint. This is how third form Freezer looked from the source material, and I totally dig it. It's accurate. But everything I feel Tamashi have done so far with characters that have a top heavy upper half, they've rectified with third form Freezer. This Xenomorph inspired head is hollow and in the best way hollowed plastic can be. The plastic is solid, not at all flimsy, with the four horns on the side using a denser but softer rubbery plastic. The weight distribution is great with Freezer, a light top, a hefty center, and solid legs and tail to give the figure really good balance. This is a fantastic engineering decision on Tamashi's part and makes posing Frieza so much easier and more enjoyable than I initially thought. Again, having the tail helps so much with balancing this figure. Aesthetically, third form Frieza is on point. The colors match up perfectly with second form and the details like the shiny purple areas on his chest, shoulder pads and head look beautiful in contrast to the flat matte white and pinks. His toes and fingernails are painted black with the brown areas on his forearms and legs looking sharp as well. What I love about this and second form freezer is how well thought out the sculpt is when broken up for articulation. Each cut on the torso, arms and legs follows the natural design of Frieza and for the most part makes for a smooth natural looking silhouette. The hinges on the shoulder pads are hidden behind the chest and the elbows, knees and crotch joints all follow the line designs respectively. For face plates we get three maniacally sinister looking expressions from a devilish grin, a menacing looking shout and an all teeth and gum smile to round it off. Because of the shape of the eyebrows, we also get an extra corresponding head for the grin and laugh faces. Printed details are pristine, no blemishes, no misprints, top marks for details. All right, so looking at articulation, we're gonna start off with the head and because of the nature or the shape of the head, freeze is not gonna look up all too much. You know, the head does sit, touch the back and you can get side to side rotation, but uh, because of the spikes there on his back, they are going to hinder a bit of that articulation when he's looking up. But if you do tilt his head a little forward, he does look, or he does swivel his head side to side. It's gonna be on an angle, but uh, that rotation is there. He does have left and right tilt, which is great and assisted by the independent neck joint and he does look down very well as well. So for his shoulder pads, again I love how they're integrated into his body. They move all the way up giving Freezer really good range with his shoulders. 360 there and he has some fantastic butterfly joints. Just look at that. He can bring his arms and there he 
got that arm back on. But yeah, again, his shoulder butterfly joints are fantastic. He can bring his arms right into his chest like that, which is excellent. You do have upper bicep swivel. Excellent double elbows and of course swivels and hinges at the wrist. For ab articulation, freezer can crunch forward very well actually. I think this might be his natural stance, you know, having him hunched over, but obviously you can get him standing straight up as well to give him a bit of height, because I do think that uh, they did retcon second form, sorry, third form freezes height. I think, I do believe he's supposed to be a bit taller, but uh, I don't know. We do have a ball joint at the upper torso, so you can get left and right tilt as well. And there is a ball joint at the lower waist, so swivels and a bit of hinge movement there, sorry, a bit of tilting there is also possible. For his legs, kicking forward and back, no problems. Splits, pretty good splits there, side to side. And for his tail, we get two joints, one at the base and one at the middle. Again, it's gonna help a ton with posing. Great. For all of your, you know, I guess more dynamic poses. We do have an upper thigh cut, double knees, and you know, you know your freezers. The feet are on, on this larger ball hinge, so they do move down very well and move up about that much. And we do get some very good ankle pivot as well. So all in all, fantastic articulation there for third form freezer. Very happy. Very fun to pose. Just excellent all round. For accessories, Freezer comes packed in with a set of fists, two beam firing hands, a set of open palm blast hands, two open palm curled finger hands, and a crossed arm accessory which plugs in at the upper biceps. We also get a pink energy effect that you can put on either of Freezer's two beam finger hands for that fight between him and Piccolo during the Namek Saga. Last but not least, we have the six star glowing Namekian Dragon Ball, which we've all seen before, but here it is. I honestly had my doubts in the beginning with how that huge head would affect the posability of this figure, but upon opening Freezer, I was pleasantly surprised. Thank you Tamashi for hollowing out the heads and making this figure not just a pleasure to look at, but a joy to handle as well. Just like Second Form Freezer, I honestly do not have any complaints about this release. Zip, zilch, nada. Does the fact that I love the Freezer Namek Saga have anything to do with it? Yeah, probably. Freezer being my favorite villain as well probably earns this release some brownie points, but it just ticks all boxes. Aesthetics, scale, articulation, if you factor in the unique design, accessories, quality, and build. It's all there as every release should be, and I really don't have anything bad to say about this figure. I'm so excited to finally have another form of Freezer in the Figuarts Arts line, and with Mega Freezer not too far away, we really only need full power to complete the original Z forms. Still, there's a bit of work to be done with Cell and Boo, but one villain at a time, I guess. Anyway, another fantastic release by Tamashi, another one that's going to be hard to put on my list. I'm not really sure where this one's going to rank, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be high up there. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you haven't already, go check out my Infinite Latent Power Trunks review, it's on the channel, or I'll have a link floating around somewhere. Make sure you like and comment, and I'll be seeing you all very, very soon. Yoroshiku!